It's been two months since we last did a production update and so much has happened. So strap in, let's go. First up, the official Instagram released this cryptic photo, suggesting that the Doctor has updated the TARDIS acronym for the 21st century. Goodbye, time and relative dimension in space. Hello, tame and relative diners in surf. Wait, does that say diners? Perhaps it's something to do with the newly designed TARDIS exterior fans have spotted on location. <laughs> That is fantastic. Oh, there's moths in here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we know it's really a wardrobe. Or is it? No, it's a wardrobe. But we are hoping to see a Doctor Who Narnia crossover. In July, production jetted off to Valencia's City of the Arts and Sciences to shoot sunny scenes that definitely didn't involve the royal family's Ralph Little. I can say categorically, the rumours are not true. For the increasingly mysterious but amazing looking episode 2. And whilst Pearl was wisely kitted out in a nice strappy number for the Spanish Sun, poor Peter proved that a tee, a jumper, a hoodie and a velvet jacket are not ideal garments for the 30 degree heat. Doctor Phew! Sarah Dollard's episode was next in front of the cameras with the writer tweeting excitedly from set that she'd props die for Peter Capaldi. Wouldn't we all? Her episode, third in the run, contains a very big something being built by Michael Pickroad and his team in the studio. And fan pics on location show a heavily costume affair, though the writer contends not Victorian with plenty of snow. Snow in Ep 1, Snow in Ep 3. At this rate, there'll be no snow left in South Wales for the Christmas special. Most excitingly of all, and spoiler alert, Bill gets a period dress and the Doctor gets a hat. Which not only does Peter Capaldi absolutely rock, it also means we can add him to our new part work. The Hats of Doctor Who is a glossy 117 week part work, celebrating the headgear of Who from across 53 years of adventures in sombreros and trilbies. As you collect them, this part work builds into a wonderful hat you can wear at home. Dollard also helpfully confirmed that she wouldn't be killing off a companion in this episode. What's that? It's Pearl Mackie breathing a sigh of relief. And let's just take a moment to remember some of the companions that we've lost over the years. photos have surfaced showing the Doctor Who crew hard at work at an iconic location from the show's past. Yes, Bill appears to be moving into West of Drumlins, the creepy house where Sally Sparrow took on the Weeping Angels in Blink. The now renovated Fields House, as it's known in real life, was also used in the Snowmen, so maybe it's just coincidence. Just don't blink, Pearl, yeah? Also announced for this fourth episode written by Who newcomer Mike Barlett is actor David Suchet, probably best known as Belgian detective Hercule Poirot. 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 Poirot? Probably best known as a Belgian detective whose name I can't pronounce, Suchet will be playing a mysterious character called the Landlord. We've had the pompous Time Lords, the violent Warlord, the petulant Dream Lord, and now the all powerful Landlord! Or maybe he's just a Landlord. We'll soon find out. Meanwhile, Peter Capaldi was pictured chilling out on set. I wonder what he's thinking about. Standard. Oh, and we also forgot to mention this cryptic little shot from the Doctor Who Instagram account. That wall looks suspiciously like the background from Bill's introductory scene. And last production update, I did say, I think that means we're going to see where that scene fits into their story. What do you think? Just saying. Well, that's all we've got time for in this update. Our spies tell us Christmas is coming soon. It gets earlier every year. So hopefully we'll have some info on that next time. Bye. Praro. No, there's no. Praro? Praro. Praro. You're putting an R in it. <laughs>